This is my Chinese electric mountain bike. The frame cost me $680 and I built it up to be a super enduro e-bike. It's got a Bafang electric motor and a huge 840 watt hour battery. And in this video, I'm gonna put it to the ultimate test. Thank you to the hundreds of thousands of you that watched my build video and a huge number of you commented on the safety of Chinese carbon, many with legitimate questions surrounding the safety of the frame. So to help test the frame, I called in Matt Bayless. This year, Matt's competing at the elite level in the UK men's downhill. I'll also be testing the motor, battery and the electrics of the Bafang system. I'll be testing the power of the motor, the range and see if it can hold up to a typical British winter. And I'll also test how the bike actually feels to ride and can it compete with some of the finest bikes on the market for 2021? Is it something that I'd actually recommend that you go out and do yourself? This is the ultimate mega test of the Cheeb. Test one, frame test. Can we break it? Will this cheap Chinese frame survive a drop? I found a drop, not huge, but around four foot of drop to flat. This puts the frame under a fair amount of stress, particularly in the chainstay area. After a load of these drops with a total of zero problems, I took it to my local trails and sent some of my typical drops that I do on a regular ride. And it survived everything I threw at it, including my rubbish technique landing. Next, it was Matt's turn to take it for a ride. Matt absolutely sent the bike on a local downhill track, hitting huge jumps, road gaps, and then went and hit some dirt jumps, not normally ridden on 24 kilo e-bikes. I think after this, we can consider the frame decent. Next up, the Bafang M500 motor. The motor is rated at 95 Newton meters. The battery's huge and rated at 840 watt hours. The fit and the finish of the motor is first class. Build quality seems excellent. There is a small screen which I don't particularly like, it doesn't quite fit on 35mm bars, and the connecting wire to the remote is too short, meaning I have to run it on the wrong side of the stem. The motor is also pretty heavy compared to the competition, weighing in at 3.4 kilograms. Bosch, Bros and Shimano are at least half a kilo lighter, but this Bafang motor is rated at 95 newton meters of torque, which is higher than all of them. So my theory is that it should feel quite a bit more powerful. So I've just found this little steep incline. I do this all the time on all the other motors, so I'm really familiar with it. So it'll give me a good sense of what the actual motor performance is like. It's only a short, sharp climb, typical of what you might experience on a regular e-mountain bike route. But let's see what well, the Bafang 95 Newton meter feels like up here. Whew. Okay, it's definitely not as punchy, I can tell. Like normally you can get propelled up there in uh, EMTB, turbo or even regular trail mode, but this I'm in the top mode. It's definitely not as punchy, I am surprised because Bafang quote it, 95 newton meters but it's just more smooth and natural not punchy and giving you that real surge of power testing in the uk winter also means you're going to get wet really wet it's harsh on all e-bikes and the bafang system didn't pass the winter test given an error after it got a super soak in on a wet ride it did dry out fine though a few hours later it was ready to rock again it is one of the quietest motors. 
super quiet under power. I'm in the maximum assistance mode right now. And it's about the same level, I would say, to my ears as the tyre noise on the road. Very quiet. And the range is crazy high. I got over 50 miles and over 5,000 feet of vertical out of this huge 840 watt hour battery. So the motor is one of the most natural motors in terms of the power it provides. It is very, very progressive. Some people really like that natural feeling. I've got to be honest, I do miss the punchiness that you get on some of the other brands like the Bosch and the Bros that give you this instant surge of power as soon as you step on the pedal. You don't get that with this Bafang M500 motor. They do an M600 motor as well, and it fits in this frame. That has more power um, and more torque. It's a little bit heavier. So if you are thinking of getting this bike and you like that surge of power, the M600 motor might be the one for you. But the M500 to me doesn't feel super powerful. It's like this natural progressive feeling of assistance and you kind of have to start spinning up a little bit before you start getting loads of power so very natural feeling super quiet possibly one of the quietest motors on the market and quiet when you're descending there's no well, i haven't heard any rattling at all from the motor so the motor and battery passed but only just next how does a bike actually ride after all, this is what it's all about. So let's talk about the geometry. 170 mil fork, 64 degree head angle, and the reach is 505 mil. I built the bike to be a long, slack, modern and capable enduro electric mountain bike. And boy, does it ride well. So you get this super amazing, stable feeling electric bike. I cannot believe how beautiful this feels sending some of the steeper, more technical descents. And the 170mm travel fork and the 155 on the rear give a nice progressive feeling and the bike is massively capable. And that Zeb on the front is so plush. The initial travel, the initial stroke is super plush, but it's stiff and it ramps up nicely. feels so stable to ride. This RockShox Super Deluxe Rear Shock provides around 155 mil travel on the rear. So the setup that I've given it provides like a super enduro style e-bike. On these descents, it feels absolutely sublime. I also caught up with Matt. I was really interested to hear his honest feedback on the bike. So with this bike, we've found that it works really well downhill. Uh, on the jumps with the extra large frame, it's a little bit big, but that's to be expected. But overall, considering it's a Chinese bike, which most people think won't work, uh, it really does seem to work well. With the components that you put on, it's it's not far off of what I ride, which is a specialized Kineva. Would you think it was a, like a $600 frame, cheap Chinese frame? No, definitely not. I mean, the way it actually feels, mine feels almost heavier with the, like the actual weight of it. I don't know it's with the carbon frame, but apart from that, it's, it's really good. And the battery, as you can see, is up to 74% and we've been riding it all day. Were you worried about snapping it? Snapping it? I didn't even think about it. <laughs> <laughs> you would never think it, honestly. If you rode it yourself, you'd never think that, so. I can't tell you that all Chinese carbon frames will perform this way. Obviously, there's going to be huge variations. Maybe we got lucky, but this Deng Fu frame seems decent. Got to say, the bike handles beautifully. I'm super impressed with the frame, the geometry, 
and the feeling of the bike with the 170 travel, 155 at the rear, it's nice and slack and it is so nice to ride. It feels nice and compliant. The suspension leverage curve feels brilliant. There's no bottoms out that you experience. It just feels like a very well put together, well built, well designed electric mountain bike with really good geometry. And I think that I would take this bike anywhere in the world. It's got a slack head angle, so you can send it down some steep tracks. I would have no problem with the quality of the frame. And I think that I've proved to myself in this video that the frame can take quite a bit of a beating. I've done hucks to flat, sent off some jumps. We got Matt involved and he absolutely sent the bike. So the quality of the bike is absolutely superb. There's a couple of downsides in terms of the geometry. The seat angle is quite sat back. It's quite a slack seat angle. So I found myself standing up on the bike to get a bit more balance on it. But for climbing, surprisingly, the seat angle, even though it's fairly slack, it's not affected the climbing ability because the chainstay is 455 mil. The only thing that I'm disappointed about is the motor power. Bafang say 95 newton meters, it doesn't feel quite as punchy and I do miss the punch that you get from the other motors that are on the market. Should everyone go and buy a DIY e-bike? Most definitely not. In fact, for most people, I would not recommend building your own cheap. It took me absolutely ages to order, source the components, paint it, build it, test it and set it all up. So I definitely not recommend it to most people. Unless you like to spend a lot of your spare time on a project bike and you see it as a bit of a hobby. But if you're interested in doing your own cheap, absolutely go for it. But I honestly think for the majority of people, this is not the best option. You need a load of tools, a load of space, a load of time. You need to order loads of parts. Warranty is a bit questionable. I've not experienced it myself just yet and hopefully I won't need to, but there's a lot of hassle building up a bike like this. Maybe there's 5% of people out there that have spare parts or want to learn how to do it or have the time um, and ability to do something like this. But honestly, it is so much easier going to the bike shop and buying a four and a half grand ready to rip straight out the box, dealer backup, warranty. And there's loads of other examples of bikes that you can get that maybe a little bit more components, maybe not quite as good, but you get the benefit of being able to walk out the door and ride straight away. But this has been a super fun project. I've really enjoyed putting this together and riding it. And it feels like my own creation.